What's up everybody, welcome to Midiverse TV. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Moog Model 15 synthesizer application. And we're running this on an iPad Air 2. And I've got a, uh, a patch loaded up here, but I'm just gonna go through a blank slate here, kind of go over the modules real quick. So the top left here, we've got the fixed filter bank. Next to that, we've got three attenuators. And then we have a VCF, low pass voltage controlled filter. Next to that, we've got two VCAs with linear and exponential response curves. And then on the next row down, we've got a series of oscillators. So the first module there is the oscillator driver module, which controls the next two oscillator modules. Next to that, we've got a high pass and low pass filter, uh, a noise source. We've got white noise and pink noise. And then next to that, we've got the full VCO module. Then on the end there, we've got two envelope generators. Those are just standard ADSRs. And then the next row down, we've got a four channel mixer with uh, inverted outputs as well as uh, the regular output. And then a, uh, a multiple. Next to that, we've got a bipolar attenuator, all the controls for your keyboard. And then we've got our kind of master output. And then underneath this, we've got all this stuff that wasn't on the original Model 15s. Yeah, so we've got different MIDI options. Uh, different sort of routing, audio, and then um, a, a delay effect, and then some kind of uh, attenuators and just kind of utility type stuff.
So there's an example of some of the stock presets. And here we can kind of take a look at them, kind of scroll through, see what all we, we get with it. And of course, you can save your own presets. So we've got the keyboard module here, which has a hold and arpeggiator click on and off. Then we've got the Animog style keyboard, which has different scaling options and whatnot, all borrowed from the Animog app, which is also excellent. We've got an arpeggiator section and then the ribbon controller as well. So here's a quick look at the settings and the scaling and kind of what all it comes with. So yeah, definitely thanks for watching this episode. I definitely give this app a thumbs up. The one thing that I did notice is it doesn't seem to support multi-touch on the, on the screen of the iPad. However, when you are sending MIDI data to it, it seems to uh, handle it just fine. So yeah, I think it sounds great. Definitely worth picking up. Thanks for watching this episode. Feel free to subscribe. And if you liked it, please push the like button. Thanks. <laughs>